Heather and I'm back with another video. I'm just being very uh, comfy cash with this video. I just set my light up here so I can with my little stand here so I can record. I'm gonna do my Q&A that I asked a couple weeks ago but I did get some questions. I got some questions on Instagram and um, here on YouTube and then I um, got some like for people who know me who were like who gave me some uh, suggestions on stuff that maybe I have not covered yet. So um, I have not written all down here. There is not an order because I just wrote them down as I went through like Instagram. I wrote all those down, then YouTube. And so <laughs> sorry for the, it's late. I don't ever do videos late at night, but I thought, let me just put this up. Let me just sit down here and get comfy and do this it's more personal this way. <laughs> All right. So the first one is, and I do not remember who uh, put these in, but some people asked to not include their name. So I'm just not including anybody's name. So if you ask questions, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so the first question is, why did you start YouTube? Um, really because I had friends and family who uh, <laughs> always were asking me like, what foundation do you suggest? What eyeliner do you suggest? What brands do you like? Um, how do you apply this? How do you apply that? And um, I have a sister who is who is and was um, more makeup obsessed than I am. And um, so she really got me into uh, makeup. And then, you know, I became the sister that had all the skills. And so she always wanted my uh, opinion on stuff. So I really did it. So friends and family who did not live near me, um, we could just kind of connect that way. And then I met some amazing people and that was about seven, eight years ago. So, um, I was only posting like seven videos a year for the first couple of years, like maybe seven to 10, like maybe once a month, maybe at most once a month for the first couple of years. So, um, I'm trying to be better than that now. <laughs> Have you been into makeup? So the, this is a little something about me you might not know. Um, I used to be what they called a tomboy. I was really um, grungy and I loved, and that's not a bad word, I was grungy. I, it was the 90s, so it was grunge music. Um, I was a skater girl. I used to skateboard all the time. I played every sport. I loved sports. And I really wasn't into makeup until probably high school. And um, maybe, maybe middle school, but mostly high school. And then I really got into makeup and um, really wanted to be like my sister who, you know, all the boys flock to. So, <laughs> um, that's when I got into makeup. And then I started doing everybody's hair and perming everybody's hair and cutting hair and doing makeup. And, you know, back then, nobody cared. Like, now, I'm sure someone would sue you for that, being 13 and doing hair. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so, probably I'm going to say middle school, high school, I really got into it. Because before, I was just like, boys, ew. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, they like it when you have sparkly lips? Okay. And now, my Mary and I could care less what. If I'm not doing it for a man. I'm doing it for me. <laughs> and the other girls. Uh, uh, the next question is, do we have kids? Do we want kids? Um, this person who asked this question is well-meaning. But no. <laughs> we don't have any. We don't want any. Um, and that's just the honest not everybody is destined or wants to have children. That's just the reality. It's 2021. There's more things that I want to do than to have children. So, <laughs> um, like, buy all this makeup that I obviously need. Um, how long have you and your husband been together? Uh, 20 years. So, uh, 2022 will be 20 years. And, you know, we could have had a kid that would be in college by now. So, um, we would have probably knocked out a few children if uh, we were wanted to, but we don't, neither one of us do. And that's my favorite question is, does your husband want children? Well, but I wouldn't be with him if he wanted children. I wouldn't tie somebody down, you know, so no, we don't want children. Um, and we've been together 20 years, um, and we've been married 16, together 20. So, um, t -t -t -t. where are you from? And um, do you plan on moving? So I am from Tennessee. If you can't tell from this, a lovely dialect that I have. Um, <laughs> um, born and raised Tennessee. And I now live in Florida. And uh, we love it here. So the people are crazy. The drivers are crazy. Um, the governor's crazy. Everybody's crazy. But the weather is beautiful. And 
you can kind of tolerate everything else, I guess. Um, but it's beautiful here. So where we live, it's beautiful. You can't ask for anything better. I would be crazy to complain. So um, it's like a breezy 70 degrees in the winter time, fall, winter, two thumbs up. <laughs> and we do plan on staying here. Um, that's one of the joys is if next year we decide we don't want to live here anymore, we can just up, uproot, move and go wherever we want to. So, um, but right now we love Florida and we plan on staying here. How old are you? I will be 40 in like six months. So I'm 39. <laughs> you can't tell. I mean, I know I look 20, but, um, Tell us about how you started your blog and social media job. So almost 11 years ago, I started a beauty blog and much like with my YouTube, because YouTube came later, but um, for my blog, I was just writing about things that I love. So the new CoverGirl lipstick that I was using, my favorite foundation that I was using, it was just real quick little photos of stuff that was in my makeup bag, stuff sitting on my vanity, just little quick reviews. And then I started getting emails from brands and they were like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for mentioning us. Can we send you some of our products? And I was like, yeah, and you gotta think this was 11, this was pre TikTok, pre YouTube, pre all the people who went, you know, who have millions of subscribers now. And I had a blog back then. I was working with huge brands and having huge brand deals and getting paid to do this. And I've been doing it for 11 years. So sometimes, um, you know, when people are like, you don't have any subscribers. How do you get PR? I'm like, it's 11 years of work. <laughs> if you can get it done and you can get PR and a lot less time, more power to you. About to you because it's been a long 11 years. <laughs> um, but now that's, uh, so, sorry, I went off track. So now the blog has become YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and I do get paid for I do get paid for all these things together. So it is like a part-time job for me. It's not, it's not, um, a full-time job. I would love for it to be. It used to be for several years. I was making more than enough and it was my full-time job. It was what I did. Um, but we hope to be there again. Um, you know, you gotta put the, what, the fruit of your labor. I don't know. I get all my sayings mixed up. So, <laughs> um, Someone asked me if I had any tips on how to get PR and I have a lot of tips, but, um, I was watching, um, the podcast with Laura Lee and Manny MUA and they said something that is one of my, like my biggest thing is they get people who write them asking them for PR. They get tons of people every day, you know, probably a hundred or more every day asking, can I be on your PR list? Can I be on your PR list? Can you please put me? And they go and they look at the people's feed and they've posted once a month, you know, once every couple of weeks, there's nothing beauty related. The photos aren't clear. The photos aren't bright. It's not makeup related. It's not beauty related. So do you think like a huge brand is going to send product to you if you're not representing what their brand stands for? I mean, it's kind of the, my, my stuff is all makeup. Um, <laughs> mostly 99% makeup, sometimes a lifestyle, but my blog is crazy, beautiful makeup and lifestyle. Um, because I used to work with Lane Bryant and all the clothing lines, um, Catherine's, a lot of the plus size brands. Um, so I was doing a lot of lifestyle. It's mostly beauty now, but yeah. So whatever you want, whatever brand you're wanting to work with, whatever you're, just make sure that your feed represents that. So if they send an intern to come look at your stuff, the intern's going to be like, boom, yes, that's everything that we ever wanted <laughs> them to be but so it's kind of what they said is kind of what that would be my answer as well if i could be on any pr list for a lifetime whose would that be and this one is kind of tricky because i love ColourPop, so i think for like affordable brands it would be ColourPop because they have really awesome collections um, and they come out with a lot of stuff. So you're bound to like, you're just bound to have everything you could ever need. <laughs> um, if you're on their list, plus like say the Mandalorian, you know, just some of their collections are just top notch. So I think, um, ColourPop for drugstore and Huda would be, I love Huda. So anything she touches is gold. So it would be Huda. <laughs> what is the first beauty product I remember using? That's a good one. Um, so, as far as makeup, I remember 
using uh, the little L'Oreal quad. It had like the little four shades of the clear lid. I think they still make them. And um, I would pick one out at the beginning of the school year and that would be my eyeshadow. And I would carry that in my little janky makeup bag and my little pur my little denim purse and that would go everywhere with me. And probably just some gold and black and I would just rock that, you know. And uh, <laughs> the Maybelline mascara, I think it's Great Lash, that was the jam. And my skincare, it was Noxzema and uh, tea tree oil because yeah, get uh, no no no, Noxzema and witch hazel because you know I had acne back then, I have acne now, but I didn't. I was just stripping my skin with witch hazel. <laughs> so, but those are the things I remember. My first things, other than like the little smackers, lip smackers, like Dr Pepper things. But <laughs> do I have a signature scent? So, like, um, I would have to say it's the Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb Nectar. That's my favorite one. Um, I have hauled it. It's been in favorites. Um, but it's, I think, the only one other than the flower original Flower Bomb. Um, but it, I'm going on, what, probably my third bottle now. So, yeah, I think that's definitely my signature set. What are three products that I have to apply before going anywhere. So I would have to say I have to put on some kind of foundation or concealer. So usually a bare minerals just real quick or a concealer depending on how dark my under eyes are. Um, I have to do the brows and probably a mascara. I might get away with the chapstick, <laughs> but I mean, if I'm going out, it's usually, I mean, I'm usually done up, but if I'm just running the dogs out or something real quick, you know, just some quick bare minerals, a little mascara under the brows. We're good. <laughs> um, I got them all written down here, guys. What brand do I own the most of? If you'd asked me a couple years ago, it would have been Urban Decay. I think I owned everything Urban Decay ever put out. I still have a lot of Urban Decay, but um, Huda, she doesn't have quite the <laughs> extensive line that Urban Decay does, but I have a lot of Huda. And ColourPop probably is the other love color pop so what is a must have luxury item that i own that i think is worth the money now luxury is tricky because i think <laughs> that when you go into ulta there's the drugstore and then there's the high end and for me the high end could be considered luxury but for a lot of people luxury is girl on i don't even know if you would consider like natasha denona and all that luxury but um I'm going to. So if it's not your, <laughs> if it's not your luxury, cool. Um, but I will say this is, um, I'm assuming you consider Charlotte Tilbury <laughs> luxury. It's her flawless filter. Um, I'm in the shade fair. It's been in my favorites. It's been in get ready with me, but it, I can put a picture here for you somewhere. Um, but the flawless filter is like, I have oily combination skin, so I'm dry and I'm oily, and it makes my makeup, it doesn't matter if the foundation is $8 or the foundation is $48, flawless. It doesn't make me greasy, it doesn't break me out, but when you're close to your 40s <laughs> and you start getting the little fine lines, everything wants to sit in them, and this just gives you just such a beautiful glow, beautiful finish to your skin, so I think it's like $46. Which, you know, give or take, may not be a luxury to some people. But I think for something that goes under your makeup. <laughs> um, I mean, you can put it on as a highlighter if you want to. But I'll use it as on first. First things first. Um, for $46, I think that's kind, of, that's kind of a luxury. It's not something that, you know, you have to have. But if you're in the market. What is a luxury item I think is least worth the money? I'm going to... I'm going to say, you do not have to spend a lot of money on foundation. There are foundations like the YSL, um, Dior Air Flash that are amazing and beautiful. But I have oily skin and I have found multiple drugstore or at least affordable foundations that stay on all day in the Florida heat, in the Florida humidity, <laughs> and they look nice. And I think the key to that is that Charlotte Tilbury. So, you know, spend money on that, spend a little bit, a lot less, a whole lot less on your foundation. Um, and so the last question is, do I have any pet peeves <laughs> and do I have any pet peeves about YouTube content creators or 
uh, anything in that realm. And I'm just going to say, I am not a person who has drama in my life. And you can, okay, and my last question is, do I have any pet peeves or um, anything that bothers me about YouTube or content creators? And I really just think it boils down to, you have to be genuine. You have to know who you're supporting. And if you get an inkling that that person is not who they are telling you they are, um, just run, just run the other way. Um, if you feel like as a creator, as somebody who's been around for a very long time, I've seen them rise and fall. Um, people who, you know, get big and they're not big anymore, or they think that they're here and now they're here and you don't even know, you don't even hear from them anymore. Like, you know, 10 years ago, the people who were popular are not the same people who are popular now. And I feel like you just, we just need to be kinder to one another. Stop climbing on each other to get to the next level. It's not that serious. Um, <laughs> and that's my, why can't we all just get along? If you don't have anything nice to say, you can come sit next to me, but <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody that you don't have anything nice to say. But no, that's truly and honestly, that's the thing that bothers me the most is that people just want to gatekeep and they don't want to share their success with you once they get to a certain level. They don't want to have anything to do with you. And that's sad, really. Um, it's not happened to me, but I see it and I hear it from other people. <laughs> um, they air their grievances and I think it sucks. I think that we, it sucks that we can't all just get along and um, it should be fun. It's makeup. It's not that serious, you know? So that was fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you have any other questions I didn't touch base on, I can do a different video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy my little setup here. <laughs> I just wanted to film real quick. Um, so yes, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.